Hello everyone, I am Dr. Shumana Dutta, Consultant Gynecologist at Narayana Hospital, Howrah. Today I will be talking about cervical cancer. As we all know, January is our Cervical Cancer Awareness Month and on this uh, event I would like to highlight about a few peculiar aspects about cervical cancer. Cervical cancer is basically a malignancy of the lowermost part of the uterus and that is called the cervix. Uh, cervical cancer is unique in a few peculiar aspects in that it is not linked to genetics that means it's like unlike other malignancy it does not give you a hereditary predisposition or a genetic predisposition secondly it is caused in most of the cases by a virus 99 percent of the cases it is caused by a virus which is known as the human papilloma virus uh, hence because of these peculiarities we have two important tools for protection and early diagnosis the first important thing about uh, uh, protection is screening. So scre uh, now how do we screen for cervical cancer? Screening is a very simple outpatient procedure which can be done in the office of a gynecologist. It's a simple test which it takes barely a minute and it can be done in two ways. Either a conventional pap smear which we all have heard uh, or a co-testing along with for an HPV DNA that is human papilloma virus DNA. Now, when do we start screening? We start screening at the age as early as 21 uh, and it continues up to the age of 65 years. If we are doing a conventional pap, then it will be once in every three years if your pe previous pap smear has been normal. And if it is a co-testing with HPV DNA, the f uh, screening frequency would be once in five years. So, uh, these two, uh, why are these uh, screening tests so important? The screening test is important in cervical cancer because cervical cancer gives us a window of almost 10 to 15 years during which a normal cervical cell, if it is exposed to oncogenic type of HPV viruses, can undergo a transformation to malignancy and in this 10 to 15 years, it transits from a normal cell to a precancerous and going on to a cancerous cell. So if we are screening regularly every three years or a five years depending on what modality we are choosing we can pick this up in the precancerous state. If it is picked up in the precancerous state then a very uh, then the uh, surgery is much less invasive and it is nearly fully treatable. Uh, the next important thing mean uh, how long do we uh, screen? The screening continues up to the age of 65 and at 65 we can stop screening uh, provided your previous pap smears have been normal. Even in a patient who has undergone a hysterectomy, if the cervix has been retained or it has been done for some uh, indication wherein there was a cervical malignancy, then the screening has to continue till 65. The other important tool for prevention or protection from it is cervical, uh, the vaccination against cervical cancer. Cervical cancer vaccination, uh, we need to know that it does not completely protect us from all types of malignant um, types of HPV viruses. That means the oncogenic types of HPV viruses. There are nearly 12 to 14 types of HPV viruses which can cause malignancy. Out of these, the cervical cancer protect us, the ones that are available presently can protect us from around four strains. Uh, they are quite effective and the vaccination can start as early as nine years. Uh, usual advised age group is nine to 13 years, though it can be done as late as 45 years, depending on the scenario. The protection is quite good, but in spite of vaccination, we still need to undergo a screening. So a person who's already been vaccinated still needs to undergo a screening in the regular interval as I had already mentioned. So uh, with these two uh, uh, aspects that is screening and vaccination, we can uh, drastically reduce the burden of disease. And hence I appeal to everyone to get our young girls vaccinated and to screen regularly in the reproductive age groups so that we can reduce the burden of disease.